Greetings, it is June the 8th, 2018, 34 years ago today, Ghostbusters premiered in theaters. Wow, has it been that long? I did not see it on opening day. I saw it later in the summer, as I've told the story before. Uh, but um, Wade Haddock posted today and said, how old were you when Ghostbusters came out? Uh, he said he was 15, and my response was, 14, chief! which is a line of dialogue from the movie Roxanne. Uh, but, uh, so yes, I'm still working on my sniffer project, uh, removing things from it that I don't need and slowly adding things to it that I do need, but I thought this would be interesting. Let's look at some of my earlier attempts to fabricate a sniffer. Now the first one's very, very crude. Back in the 80s, I found this, and this kind of looked, oh, that's about the right shape. Uh, and what it is, it's a, a cartridge holder. Uh, it says uh, eight round clips and bandoliers, uh, 30 cal. They misspelled the word bandoliers, but I won't tell if you won't. And I don't know whose it was, possibly my grandfather's, possibly an uncle's, possibly my dad's. Uh, and I paired it with this probe. That's not a probe, that's a car antenna. <laughs> but anyway, that was my first attempt at making a sniffer, uh, was putting these two things together. And I covered up the text. Right here, you can kind of see some of the residue from it. Uh, I put a piece of yellow graph paper on there and then uh, put black electrical tape. And at some point that peeled off. You can still see the residue of, uh, of the adhesive of the black electrical tape just to cover that up and put some sort of, you know, ghost chart, uh, vapors, roamers uh, kind of uh, detail on there. And um, this was kind of rusted shut. I opened it all ago and I got hit with a whiff of 80s air <laughs> in there because that's probably the last time I tried to open it. But, um, so yeah, that was number one. And then number two, following a tutorial by Jamie Hitchcock, was I, I bought one of these Kinex uh, blocks carriers. And that's a pretty good shape. I, I especially think the handle is very apropos. Little, little small. Uh, and then inside of it uh, are still the Kinex that were in it when I bought this off eBay. And an aspirator bulb that I procured at some point that I had forgotten about. So we'll set that to the side. Let's compare size-wise though. So <clears throat> here is that and this. A little tall, a little narrow, about the same width, maybe a little bit wider. So yeah, if you guys want to follow her tutorial about that, that's not a bad idea. And then let's compare these two. Uh, again, a little wide. About the right height. So yeah, I was I was eyeballing things pretty good. But of course, we're gonna use this one. Okay, a couple of quick updates. Uh, I have uh, taken this apart and looked at some of the internals and tightened some screws that were loose. There was actually a, a screw inside that was just rattling around, fell out when I took it apart. Uh, so I put that back in what I hope is the correct place. While I had it apart and looking at the way things were done, um, I could not figure out how to remove that button right there from the inside. So that's another uh, day's work that I'll have to get to. And uh, the trigger was actually uh, not quite where it should be. So uh, one of its screws was loose and it was sort of like this. So I put it back straight and uh, tightened that screw. And what's really cool about the trigger is um, it makes a great noise, number one, but you can also lock it in place and then release it. So I just think that's something neat. Um, another item did arrive, which was the surgical tubing that I ordered following the thread on GB Fans by Ryan the Ghostbuster. But I don't think this looks right. I think maybe this is OD when it should have been ID. I've ordered uh, a quarter inch inner diameter uh, tubing to replace this quarter inch outer diameter tubing. And uh, this arrived today, but it seems really small. I, I took a photo of it in relation to the sniffer and then doctored the photo to compare them size-wise to a frame of the movie. Actually a frame from the, sh the original commercial shoot footage rather than the finished film. You know, one step closer to the camera. Kind of compare the size-wise. This is a little bit undersized, but really not that much. Uh, I have a slightly larger aspirator bulb that I bought years ago, but my immediate thought to the texturing, and Zach echoed the same thing, was that it looks like a hand grenade. And it's enough of a thing that I think would be worrisome to people if I walked around in public with this dangling. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'd like to find one closer. Hey, it's nice and sturdy though. I'd like to find one closer to this size than this size. 
uh, but without any of this texturing on the exterior. But also listen to the noise because I think this one makes an okay noise, but I think this one makes a great noise. So I've uh, taken some photos along the way of gutting this and taking out some parts that I don't need and I'm gonna sh present those to you now with my voiceover. So as I was dismantling the original digital gauge I noticed there was a little stowaway on board. Some sort of little dead bug, no telling how long he was in there. Now to get the gauge out I was gonna have to get this ribbon cable out from under this other bundle of cables. A little bit tricky. As I slid it under them, I accidentally tugged two of them out of their location, but I think I got them back in properly. And then I realized that the entire battery holder was going to have to come out to unplug the ribbon cable. Actually, that looks like some parts I bought for my trap pedal. I didn't want to cut any wires if I could avoid it, so in order to remove the battery pack, I cut the cable ties. I actually use nail snips for that because that's what I've found works the best. Also notice here that I've knolled my hardware. I, I like to put the screws back in the exact same location from which they were removed. So these were arranged so that they'd go back in the right spots. Without the cable ties in place, it was a lot easier to unplug the two wires of the battery pack. I think that'll cut the weight down some. Now these wires removed with their plugs intact. Some other ones later uh, did not. I sourced some modern cable ties of the same approximate size, these were four inches long, and then I bundled them back in the same locations. I used the nail snips again to cut off the excess, and I didn't really photograph this the other day, but these are the two screws that I tightened to get the uh, trigger back at a more level positioning. Look at the blue housing of the uh, top button over on the right of the screen. I looked it up by its manufacturer and serial number. It's a Borns 3540S16203, and I tried to figure out how to remove it, but I didn't get a specific hit about the button that was on there. I tried pulling it off with a pair of needle nose pliers, but all that happened was this central cap popped out. There was some trial and error to get the brass piece to turn without the silver shaft turning below it. Uh, I used needle nose pliers to get into those notches that you see at the 2 and 8 o'clock positions, but I'm still not really sure how I got it out of there. Once it was off, I noticed in this photo there's a fingerprint on top of the silver shaft. I don't know if that's one of mine or could have been the guy that assembled it at the factory. Here's what the underside of that removed button looked like. And once the button was off, I used the needle nose pliers to unscrew the brass hex that held the button in place uh, with comparative ease. Then I realized I had to get those two wires past five cable ties. Luckily, these didn't double back on themselves like the wires to the battery pack did, so I was able to actually unplug them from the board and slip them through the cable ties without having to cut any more cable ties. Really, after the first one was out, you had enough slack to get the second one out with ease. I needed to remove this piece to have clearance for the new meter. I took off a couple of hex nut screws that were holding it in place, and then this is where things went sour. Instead of leaving everything in a restorable condition, I accidentally broke a couple of the wires when I was removing it. The wires broke off of the motor of the pump, for lack of a better term, and then they broke off of the board at the other end instead of their plugs pulling out. Taking out the motor left a loose tube at about, oh, three o'clock there on your screen. I decided to cinch it up for reassembly, so I attached it to that white nozzle at the nine o'clock position. Effectively, I bypassed the removed motor. This was the first meter that I bought, and it's not technically 100% accurate to a 300, so I ordered another one. And after several hours of tinkering, these were all the parts that I had removed. Okay, so, uh, sorry for the previous uh, portion of this video where things are kind of jumping around. I'm in two different uh, uh, shirts. Uh, stuff filmed on different days, and I decided it worked better in a different order when edited together. So, here is the sniffer. A couple of quick things I wanted to touch on. Right here, there's these little scratches. I don't know how visible those are. I saw them earlier when I was editing footage together. And that reminds me of that graph paper that I put on the side of this so much. It's kind of eerie. I, I almost wish there was a way to uh, record that for posterity and make it a part of the finished prop. Obviously, I've attached the strap uh, with the slide fasteners. I haven't yet sewn the portions that double back on themselves. I need to get that done. And then I was uh, talking about the gauges here. I said meters at one point, uh, but that's the one that uh, Ben of Kent uses. And then this that uh, Ryan the Ghostbuster recommends in the tutorial thread, which is matched to the actual 300 unit that Sabaska, uh, one of the GB fans, uh, had. So that's going on, and then I've bought some little um, hex nuts. I actually had to get screws and hex nuts uh, in order to uh, cinch that in from the bottom because those are 440s. 
the the previous one fits kind of really well and this one just wants to kind of fall out of there so i got those hex nuts and then also some number six washers just in case i need them and that will attach from the inside actually i was debating whether or not to even order this sphygmo manometer bulb sphygmo manometer do 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 uh and I, I went ahead and bit the bullet and ordered one and then lo and behold we were uh cleaning some stuff out the other day and my wife finds uh an actual uh blood pressure cuff uh that is just lying fallow and i said well i don't want to tear that apart i'll just use the one that i ordered so now then i had the smaller tube amber surgical tubing this arrived today so let's uh attach that to that and then on the inside here of this is a little terminal that i'll be able to turn around the other way Ryan the Ghostbuster had a more complicated idea about a brass nozzle and, and tapping and threading and screwing it in there, but looks to me like I can take that existing piece, pull the tube out of it, turn it 180 degrees, and plug the end of this tube right onto it. So let's give that a try. And then also, my black tubing that I ordered has come in. So we'll attach that to this one. Now there should be a, an actual quick connect that's doing this instead of sliding the tube over the port there, but I just want to sort of demonstrate. Uh, this was something else that I ordered from eBay. People say that this is a neat little uh, device uh, because it's very Ghostbustery. It has a red button on it and it, it's very in the aesthetic of Ghostbusters and you actually do assemble it and disassemble it with socket head cap screws and Allen wrenches. So I thought that was very fitting. Speaking of the red button, when the previous surgical tubing arrived, the red button was in the box with it and I didn't notice. So I looked it up and it said that it had already shipped and delivered to my uh, front door on Saturday. And I'm like, where is this? It was in the box, which luckily I had not thrown out. Uh, I ordered both of them off Amazon at the same time and they shipped them in one box together. So, took the, the button and it was too small for the existing hole. Uh, that was left when I removed that uh, blue Borns button assembly. So Ryan the Ghostbuster had a rather complicated idea. I thought, I think a washer would work. So I went with this and the, and the red button to Lowe's. I found a washer that would fit them uh, and would fit right there into that existing spot. So I took this with me to Walmart and I picked out three possible colors of spray paint and being colorblind, I had two sales uh, ladies, very helpful sales ladies, narrow it down for me which one they thought was a match. And then I spray painted a washer and I put the button on it and that will go right in there and I will hot glue it in from the back side. But just for now, that's how that's looking. And so that's Rust-Oleum Satin Dark Walnut, uh, which was actually a pretty good match to the, the color of the actual plastic that it was molded in. So the other day when I was uh, had the whole thing disassembled and I had it in my lap and I realized I would need the nail snips to undo. Man, there we go. Uh, see, just turn around the other way and then we'll have a port there to attach this piece of tubing to on the other end. Ta-da! And then if we've got that turned around backwards, then we can take this tube and attach it on there. It's going to be a little bit loose. I'll have to uh, put something else inside there to help it stay on. So, and then the only thing I'm lacking now is a probe. So, we're getting there. But uh, yeah, when I realized I, need, I would need the uh, nail snips, uh, I didn't want to disturb all the stuff laid out across my lap and I, I called Zach to bring them to me. <laughs> he brings me the nail snips and he goes, good lord, that's a lot of technology and programming. So uh, that was his take on what the guts of this thing look like all laid out. And then if we put the little red button in, so it's mostly turned into what it's supposed to look like aside from the labels and a probe. So happy Ghostbusters Day and thank you for watching.